Hello, this is Dr. Kamani, licensed clinical psychologist. And you may be wondering if you're in a toxic job, how are these people able to get away with doing this to all these people? You may be wondering that. And I know I absolutely wondered that because many times when you're in a work environment that's toxic and there's might be like the workplace bully or someone who is engaging in negative behaviors, that person is already well known in the organization. So those who are running the organization or human resources, they already know about this person. So you might think, wait a minute, I I'm going to, you know, uh, find out about what this person did. Like almost like an investigation, like you're trying to collect data on this person so you could take it and you know, uh, call them out and, you know, get them in trouble or whatever. And you may be getting all your papers ready and all your documentation ready to, to expose the workplace bully or to expose this person who's been engaging in negative behaviors, which actually sabotage the work performance of employees and really damage the organization. So even though those in upper management or HR know about these bullies, what they don't seem to get, which is really strange, they don't really get that by allowing the workplace bully or these other people engaging in negative behaviors, why, when they allow these behaviors, they are undermining the effectiveness of people being able to do their jobs. And then the bottom line is they're not going to make as much money. So if you just think about when, when there's low morale, what happens? People start calling in sick more often. They're getting sick more often. They're trying to find another job. They're not giving their all into the job. So it really doesn't benefit the organization for people to be complicit and, and try to protect those people who are terrorizing other people in the workplace. But what I want to say is you might also get trapped in this way of thinking about, you know, it, how are these people getting away with this stuff? The point is that they are. Let, let us not spend any more time trying to figure out how is this possible? Because the fact is that they are, and they are all over the world. <laughs> they are able to treat us, treat Black women horribly and get away with it. And they may even not only be protected, they may even be promoted. So I know I experienced that. People knew about this person, but she just kept getting promoted. It didn't matter. So if you are in this situation too, I just invite you, if, you, if you're just like, how can this be happening? This is wrong. You know, I, that person needs to be reported. Who are you going to report the person to? And more than likely, if you're reporting that person, they've already known about you. They've already peeped you and they've already circled the wagons to protect this person and to attack you. So when you are in a situation where you're seeing these horrible things happening to other people, to you, let us not spend time trying to figure out how is it that this person can get away with it. They can get away with it because the whole environment is toxic. So it's not just one person. It's not one bad apple. The whole environment is rotten. Okay. So when you recognize that, stop yourself if you start saying, or if you, if you think about saying that. I invite you to say, wait a minute, how is it that they get away with this stuff? Because I'm sure I'm not the only person who's complained. And if you ask yourself that question, you will arrive to the answer that they allow this. The environment allows for these people to do these behaviors. So let's not spend time thinking the how. And we also know that karma is real that whatever these people are doing and colluding with one another and all that kind of stuff, they'll end up losing down the line. You may not be, a, you may not witness it. You may not be there to witness it. And you may not even be the one who contributes to calling these people out. You may not be the one. However, we know that karma is going to come back and get them. And my hope is that you're already at that environment and you don't even have to bear witness to any of it because you're moving on with your life. So the more that we're attached to and trying to figure out why or how or all these other things, it is really wasting our time because ultimately the system, the
That's the answer. The system is toxic. That's how they can get away with it. The other thing is that we are taking our attention, our energy away from what we could be doing to preparing ourselves to get out. So if you're locked into this, I, I don't understand it. How could it be? And you're like talking to your work colleagues, you're talking outside the job with your friends and your family to the point they're probably sick of hearing about it. So you keep going on about this drama, but this is a distraction. So when you see a sign like this, this is a sign. This is a sign that this environment is not healthy for you. When you see the sign, now it's up to you in terms of what do you choose to do? So now that you recognize that this person or these people are able to engage in these negative behaviors because the system allows for it to happen. The system protects these people. The system does not call these people out. So even though we know that it's going to come back negatively on the organization because this person or these people are undermining the success of the organization, we know that. That is not our job to try to save this organization. If they've chosen to engage in toxic behaviors, then why are we trying to save the organization? The organization is not looking out for you. The organization is not trying to save you. The organization is not trying to protect you. So why do that? Again, when you recognize that it's happening, when you recognize you want to start going down that rabbit hole, how or why, or I'm going to show them, or they can't do these things to me, pause, because you recognize that, pause and say, is it worth the fight? And what are you fighting for? Who are you fighting against? Because many times you might think you're fighting against one person. There's a whole team waiting to take you down. There's a whole team. So you go into HR, try to make an appointment with HR. The bully or those negative people have already talked to HR. They've already came up with a game plan about how to deal with you because now you are seen as a problem. And when somebody's seen as the problem in terms of disrupting the, the system, many times they are pushed out or they are belittled or in some kind of way that that person gets so fed up that they say, I'm done. So think about it. Is it worth it? And I hope that you recognize that it's not worth it. It's not worth trying to figure this out. It's very clear. Let's not spend our time trying to figure it out. And how do we channel that energy to, okay, I see what's going on. It's not worth it. It's not worth it. I might think that I can fight it, but the game is rigged. You cannot win a game that's rigged and you're going to end up losing in the process. So think about all the emotional energy that you're going to put in this situation and it's not going to fix anything. It's not going to solve anything. The only one who's really going to be impacted the most in terms of losing is you because you're going to be losing your peace of mind. You're going to be losing time, taking time out of the day after you get home on the weekends, trying to get all your documentation together. Is it worth it? So just ask yourself, is it worth it? So when you're in a situation and these things are happening to you and you want to Stop yourself. And my hope is that you have a community of people around you, whether it be family or friends, and again, not people in the workplace, family or friends outside of the workplace who can kind of call you in and say, sis, let it go. Sis, the system is toxic. Sis, there's other opportunities for you. There's other things you can do. You don't have to only stay at that one job. And why are you trying to save an organization? that is harming you? Why are you trying to say to an organization that will see you getting harmed and not try to protect you, but you're trying to save the organization? Does it make sense? Just, just, think, just think of that to yourself in terms of asking yourself these questions, okay? So I just want to briefly talk about this because I know I got caught in this situation. I got caught in this and the sense of, I'm going to call this person out and I'm going to show I have all my documentation and I'm going to show how this person's connected to this person. Da, da, da. And the thing about it, too, and because I've interviewed so many people and I've talked to so many people about toxic jobs, even those who have been in administration and HR, what you don't know is that in a lot of a lot of cases, these people are connected in some other kind of way. So they are friends they may be having inappropriate 
relationships with one another. We know what that is. So we may not know, but that's many times how they're protected because they have other types of relationships with these people and or they may. And I heard about this, too. I, I couldn't believe it. But there was a somebody talked about bullying up. So the person who might be like the workplace bully or the one engaging in negative behaviors might have a certain position, but they're bullying those people who are above them. And many times because they have some type of intel on them, they have some information about them that might take them down or something. So again, we don't know what is going on behind the scenes. We have no idea. But I want to say, why do you want to know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Many times it's, it's something so um, jaded and so underhanded and just so just you don't want to, you don't want to be a part of that you don't want no parts of that okay move pivot go somewhere else where you don't have to deal with that nonsense so just some questions to share with you to invite you to self reflect because the biggest part in terms of getting ready to leave a toxic job is dealing with our minds and our mindset and the ways that we get stuck. Sometimes we have these mind tra traps and we get stuck. Oh, we can get stuck in that. I'm going to show you um, that you're not going to get away with this, all this stuff. And then we're stuck here. So think about how much time you're wasting there when you could be spending your time somewhere else to prepare for your exit. So my hope is that by watching this video, it is preparing you to get ready to leave a toxic job because you know that a toxic job is not healthy for you. You know that there's some signs going on within you that's telling you that the toxic job is harming you. And you know that more than likely, nothing's going to get better at that toxic job, even if you try to so-called call them out. If anything, it's going to get much worse for you. And I'm saying this from somebody who's experienced it. Retaliation is so real. So I've experienced it and I've heard so many other Black women talk about it. It's not worth it. I'm just telling you, sis, it's not worth it. So I hope that you are able to, again, listen to my videos, listen to what I'm sharing with you to support your own process of self-reflection and assessing your situation and getting your mind right so that you can eventually leave. So again, leaving a toxic job is not easy. It generally is not like an immediate type of a thing. It's often a process. And I want to kind of walk you through the process because I've been there as a toxic job survivor. I don't want you to stay there as long as I did. I was there for years. I don't want you to stay there for years. I want you to be able to recognize things sooner. And I want you to be able to access, resor access resources sooner because I didn't know about resources. I didn't know what to do. I kind of felt like I was just like out there, like, I know I got to get out of here, but I don't know what to do. If that is you, I want to assure you that there are resources available to you. So not only this video and my other videos on my channel, there are other resources for you, but the next step is on you in terms of, are you ready to even start the process? And starting the process might just be as easy as watching some videos, watching my videos, watching Colette Elizabeth, Marissa Price. It just might be a process for you. But my hope is that you engage in the process because you know that you want something better for yourself. So as I'm signing off, I'm asking if you could please give this video a thumbs up. It tells YouTube to suggest this video to other Black women who might be in similar situations. And again, my video. All of my videos focus on how to help Black women leave and heal from toxic jobs. I'm ushering in a movement. I'm, I'm out here. I, I feel like I have, not, I have nothing to lose at this point, right? So I've already left the toxic job. I've already resigned. I have nothing to lose. But I want you to have a different experience. I want you to see that you can get out. You can heal. I'm still healing. You can do that too. But a key part is getting ready to leave. So. If you have not already subscribed to my channel, please do so. Lifting as we climb consulting wellness services. So as I'm lifting, as I'm healing, and I'm continuing to heal, as I am doing that, I'm reaching back for as many Black, as many black women as I can to reach out to you, to also help you, to help you see that there's a way out, 
to share with you resources and all the resources that I've talked about are in the description section of this video and my other videos as well. I'm reaching out to you and I hope is that you, your head is open so you're able to receive what resources are available to you because they're, they're there. And that as you are doing this, as you are healing for yourself, starting the healing process, that you are reaching out to other Black women who might be in similar situations and helping her too. So you can do something in terms of sharing the resources that I have in the description section. You can also share this video with other Black women. So you are helping in this movement as we're moving along and we're in our movement. The more we move and the more we stand up to these jobs and just leave and find something better, we are showing employers that you cannot continue to treat us like this. We are not going to fall for the okie doke. We're not going to stay trying to figure out why this is happening and how you can get away with it. We're just going to leave. And now who, who is going to do the jobs now? So we put employers in notice by that. And who said, I don't know who said this, but they said something about um, you will miss, give them the presence of your absence or something like that, right? So you're going to miss me when I'm not here. You're going to miss all of us when we're not here. But if you can't treat us right, you don't deserve us because we are the gift. We are the gift. We are the talent. So they need us. They need us. Okay. So again, I'm signing off. Again, give this video a thumbs up. Share this video with other Black women. And subscribe to this channel, Lifting As We Climb Consulting Wellness Services. Okay. Take care. Bye-bye.